Oftentimes players ask us, how do you come up with something immediate and on the spot? Well, thankfully today we'll be talking about how to create a homebrewed one-shot. Welcome to Homebrew Help, our uh, ongoing series, off and on for the yeah, next. Yeah, I was describe it. <laughs> uh, but it is something that uh, we get to sit here and chat a little bit with you guys uh, and talk to you about some of the things that have happened in our campaigns and uh, some of the questions that we get. Yeah, today is going to be kind of like one-shotting 101 in a way. Sure. Uh, typically, a lot of the times when we're going through some of our chats or sometimes even when you're going through social media, a lot of people always ask, like, how is the best way to prep? Or, like, my players didn't like this thing and the thing that I ran. What happened? And there really is a bit of an art to creating a homebrew one-shot because you're kind of confined to those however many couple hours you have for that day. Mm -hmm. But really, though, it's also in the sense that it, it is kind of an art, but at the same time, once you do it, after a while, once you know what you're doing, you can, not to make them sound not as important, but you can kind of, you know, hammer them out a little easier for your sake. Yeah, there's often times that a DM gets stuck into a situation where it's, uh, you know, maybe another DM calls in sick or something like that, or, you know, I can't make it or anything like that. And you have to be able to create something in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. What we're going to go over real quick here is our process of creating a one shot, because to us, it's almost like that it's like oh yeah i'll i'll dm tonight not a big deal i can't i remember how many times like i've had to like create a session maybe the night before or two nights before but you know with the points that we bring up today and maybe it doesn't work out for you at least for us we've been able to create a lot of really decent sessions i like to think uh, based off of the steps that we can take today so now the first one that we're going to get into here and i'm sorry there's no little cards up there this is a more you know impromptu thing uh but the first thing you have to do when you're making a one shot is quickly decide what your problem or your conflict is going to be. Now, this sounds pretty straightforward, but again, we're not trying to write a campaign. We're not trying to write a long time story. Mm -hmm. We're trying to write kind of this one instance issue or this one instance conflict that we're going to try and solve in a single session. Right. So you're confined by the time and you can't really throw in a lot of the usual stuff like backstory and all the stuff about your world and this, that, whatever. One shots are usually designed to either be dungeon crawls or quick missions that the players are set out to do. A lot of people think that you have to think outside the box and avoid tropes when really when you're creating a one shot, you're actually probably going to end up with a trope and turn it into something that isn't a trope by the end. Don't forget, tropes are fun. I mean, going out on that treasure hunt or going out uh, to rescue the fair maiden or saving a town from a bunch of trolls, those are those are the basics of what D&D is anyway. Exactly. And really the art about it is taking the time to add NPCs, stories, and other stuff to basically make sure that it doesn't look like a trope, which we're going to get into later in the video. Right. Now, the second thing we want to talk about here is normally in a full campaign, you get time to introduce your characters and your story arc and why they're going on a mission and all of that. And you should. You should absolutely do that to make your players' enjoyment better. But we ran into a nifty little trick here that we use uh, when doing a one shot. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to be completely blunt with your players uh, and providing them the information of the quest up front. Have you ever written, uh, gotten into a situation where you sit down at a table, you're supposed to DM, and all of a sudden all your players are doing different things and you, they don't know where the storyline's going and it's this or whatever? Don't worry, you're not a bad DM, you just forgot to tell them what they're supposed to do. Yeah, you're going to find yourself in a lot of situations where players will get distracted if they really don't know what the goal is. Now, you can do this maybe a little bit before if you have time to plan. You can let them know, hey, hey guys, next week we're going to be playing this adventure where this might happen. Or if you happen to be running something last minute, be upfront right at the beginning. Hey guys, we're going to be playing in this adventure where this is going to happen and this is your quest but you don't want to reveal all your cards at the same time up front. Right, a simple thing in the beginning of your session of, you've been hired to take out the troll that's been terrorizing the town. Mm -hmm. Works perfect for that. They now have a goal and they know that no matter what they're doing and how crazy the table gets, that's what they're supposed to accomplish. Exactly, and finding a balance as to too much detail and not enough detail, you kind of want to pick something where, okay, it's very obvious what we're going to do today, but we don't have all the details, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, so it still gives your players opportunity to role play, to explore, to think outside the box, while still knowing the main mindset of like, we have to finish mm -hmm. this goal. Now, we always go over the three pillars with this, yes. uh, because they're, you know, they're intricate to, uh, to a great campaign, but putting those three pillars in in a tight amount of time sometimes is, is kind of hard. 
Yes, and if you're not aware, these three pillars are typically combat, exploration, and social. And I know that there are really great sessions out there where maybe the whole time you're just going through story, or maybe the whole time you're talking to people, or maybe the whole time you're fighting in a dungeon. And this works generally much better in a full campaign setting. Mm -hmm. When you're running a one shot, unless it's like a really awesome dungeon or something, typically you want to try and incorporate all three of these elements to kind of add that variety and give each type of player in that one shot a chance to shine. Right. You never want to have in a one shot an entire shopping episode <laughs> yeah. or an entire story that you wrote that's nothing more than role play the entire time. Right. Yes, it's fun for some people at the table, but normally in a one shot setting, you've got random people or uh, just a couple of players with that and everyone has their own tastes. So try to cater to each one of them those by putting in a little bit of combat, a little bit of exploration, and I don't mean traveling the hills <laughs> right. out there. I mean, give them great descriptions as to what's around them, what they're walking through so that they feel like they are exploring, and then put some colorful NPCs in there uh, dotted along the way. Yeah, and not to say that it's going to evenly end up in three equal pieces. Maybe you have a little bit more combat, maybe you have a little bit more exploration. But the point is to try and incorporate all three to kind of, again, add that variety to your session and make it a really fun time by at least having a little bit of everything. Now, I would add one little thing to the combat thing. Mm -hmm. Make it hard. <laughs> I'm telling you, go either deadly, and I'm serious, deadly, or uh, hard to deadly. I would never go anything lower than that in a one shot. You know why? It's very simple. You're expecting players to die, you're expecting things to be difficult, and you want to create a challenge. I've seen so many one-shots go bad because you've got, you know, one small creature at the end that you were thinking was going to be the big thing, and your players knock it out in a couple hits, and you're sitting there going, well, I don't have anything else planned. Make your combat last a little longer by putting a beefier mob out there. As much as D&D is a great storytelling game, combat is a really big part of the game as well. So make sure that you toss a little bit in and don't be afraid to rough up your players a little bit. Now, on section four of this, we talk about the skeleton. And I don't mean putting undead in a campaign, undead or overrated, but <laughs> um, map out exactly what you want to happen. Realize that your players are never, ever, ever going to sit through your 12 pages of story that you wrote. Give bullet points of what you think should happen. Okay, I want them to go to this area, I want them to encounter this, I want them to have this puzzle to solve, I want this to happen. The stuff in between doesn't matter. Now, I think this is kind of something that you have to practice over time. Personally, for me, when I first started, I had journals of notes for a single session sometimes saying, I want it to happen like this, and this has to pop up, but then if this comes up, then I have to get this ready. When in the end, I realized I maybe used about 25% of the stuff that I had written down at the end of the day, and there are some times where I didn't have enough of my skeleton. So it's really about finding a balance of mm -hmm. having it open enough, having a couple countermeasures in there in case some things go awry, and making sure that your player are the ones that are kind of more so running the story. You're kind of helping guiding their way through this world, still getting them to the end of the goal, though. Right. By having those bullet points with it, you go, okay, well, they're going to accomplish this. You know, like, let's say you want to have a thing where they, they travel out of the town and they encounter a tree, mm -hmm. right? I did this to my players last oh, nice. week and they okay. hate me. <laughs> um, but they encounter a tree. And uh, you, you don't necessarily say what happens with the tree. You just bring it up as an encounter point and they role play into it mm -hmm. and they figure it out from there. You, you know, could have something that furthers the story from that tree, but the, the effects of what you want to happen at there never plan for what your players are going to do. Yeah, and actually it kind of already goes into our next point, which we'll just jump into right now, which is basically making your one shot adaptable and again, playing around your players and reacting to them rather than trying to keep them confined to whatever story that you're trying to do. Right. The times that I've DM'd and we've had the most fun have always been when one player does something odd and I just go, okay, let's go with it. Let's <laughs> see what happens. If you're dead set on, no, this has to happen in my story, you're never going to have fun. Yeah, it's an interesting thing because when you run a full campaign, you know, if it goes on for months or years, you know, you'll it's kind of like a roller coaster. You're going to have those high points and low points. When it's a one shot, you kind of have to hope that the whole thing is a bit of a high point. So you <laughs> want those moments to happen. You want to make sure that it's memorable. So you don't want to confine your players to, you know, being limited to what they can do. Let them explore a little bit and, you know, give them a good time. 
Now, that's going to wrap it up for this. I know that's kind of a short five-point thing, but truly, honestly, that's what we do every time we have to do a one-shot for something. We don't sit there and write tomes upon tomes of our stories. We don't sit there and plot out every single move. We just basically skeleton it out for what we want to happen, uh, and we play with what our players give us. And again, if you're kind of new to DMing or if it's something that you still can't wrap your head around, just remember that it's a skill that requires practice and a little bit of time to dedicate to it as well. You're only going to really learn how to react to players and how to write stories when you write more stories and when you react to more players. So go out there and play with friends. Try playing with a couple strangers if you ever get a chance and see how they react and see if you can kind of help hone your skills as well. Now, we're always interested in what you guys have to say about your techniques and all the things that you do uh, when making a one shot or or a homebrew campaign. So go ahead and write them down in the comments below. We love seeing those and we try to respond to them as much as we can. And remember, sometimes the best campaigns or one shots are the ones that you homebrew. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.